Okay, we're going to get started. Okay. We can all front. Yep. Front row. <clears throat> so my name is Marcy Mason, and um, this is going to be recorded. So you can come back at any time to see it, to watch it. Um, this is in conjunction with the Monroeville Public Library and the Monroeville Arts Council. The Monroeville Arts Council has art of all kind that they do um, different programs with. And you can check on their website as well as the Monroeville Library because they too have so many different programs um, that they are involved in. Tonight is a watercolor picture and we are doing a beach watercolor picture. So um, I'm going to be showing you step by step if you want to paint at home as I'm showing you, that's perfectly fine. Or you can just watch and then go back to the actual um, tape and the video and watch it again and paint with it so you can stop it and start it and back it up and do whatever. Um, tonight, we're just going to kind of uh, do a nice, quiet rolling in of the waves. Um, I will be using. Uh, mainly blues tonight, sky, ocean, use a little bit of turquoise, use a little bit of green in that water. And then of course the sand is going to be more of a brown color. I'm also going to be using white. A lot of people don't like to use white, but I am one of the ones that do like to use white. Um, it just, to me, uh, makes a picture look more realistic than trying to leave just white paper. Okay, but that's just my personal preference. We're also going to be using salt this evening, um, table salt. The table salt is just to um, give your picture texture, not the salt, but the reaction of what the salt does on your paper. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be putting in our sky. Excuse me, before you start. Yes. Do you use a certain type of paper? I use um, arches, but that doesn't mean that that's, you know, the only kind to use. I do like uh, paper that is not in a tablet, though. I don't like the blocks. Again, my personal preference. I like the single sheet paper, and I like cold press. Paper, right? mm -hmm. I, like, I like 140 pound okay. cold press. Okay. I don't like the hot press. I, Again, it's all just personal preference, but I like um, the cold press. Okay, this is at this piece of paper is actually a quarter of a sheet, so the sheets come uh -huh. twenty-two by thirty, okay. and you can get four uh -huh. nice size pictures yeah. from them. Okay. Is the cold press is that also cloth? She said it's actually. Yes, yeah, it's it's rag. It's, it's it's rag. rag. It is too. Mm -hmm. It's just pressed, compressed almost too much. Correct. Your right. Right. Okay. This is just the right absorbency that I like. Perfect. Sure. Oh, sure. No, it's fine. Okay. It's not a heavy it's cardboard, right. but it's enough that it'll keep its shape. You know, right. um, the other thing is I do not tape my paper down. A lot of people tape their paper down, but I move my picture. So I really don't, you know, I don't tape down. Right. Okay. I've only did, like I said, I've only did one watercolor. I usually do the uh, acrylics. Mm -hmm. Well, you will, you will learn that with, well, especially I with have watercolor. A watercolor set. Then, gave you for Christmas. Well, there you go. I used it the one time. The key with watercolor is watercolor follows the source, okay. and the source is water. water. Okay, so if you don't give it a source to follow, it will just sit there. Okay, if you want your colors to move and to blend and to bleed, you need to give it that water path to do that. If you want the water color to stop at a certain part, then you don't put your water past that part. Okay. Um, the other thing too is you have to know when to put water in and when to not put it down. Once you've put your paint, your paint down, then you don't want to go back in with plain water because oh, that changes okay. the ratio of the paint and the water and you'll get bleeds and blends and, and you don't want that. 
Now on some things, it might be okay, okay? So you have to know when to do that. But we're gonna do our sky right now. And because my water is basically going to have some blues in it also, I'm gonna take my blue right down to the top of my big wave. That's gonna help me to show where that nice big wave is going to start. So I'm mixing up a nice little puddle. You never should think of your paint as, oh my gosh, I'm wasting this. You're always going to be using it because if it dries on your palette, the minute you put water to it, it comes right back, okay? So I am going to be putting my sky color on first. Nice big brush, use different kinds of brushes because by using different kinds of brushes, you will get used to, um, you know, using different brushes for different things. No, not at all. And you can, sure. And you can also see what I'm doing on here. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. if you can't see well from, no, you're not in anyone's way. Okay, so now I am going to lessen the intensity of my blue just by putting in some plain water ahead of my blue and allowing my blue paint to wash into that. Okay, now the reason I'm just going to the top of my wave right now is because I need to have a cutoff point. I need to remember where the top of my wave is going to be so that I don't have to actually go back in and redraw anything. So I am putting my, um, stopping my paint at the top of my wave right now, just for a minute. So you did draw that on first. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. okay. Very, very yes. minimal, right? Yep. Well, okay. it depends. If you want a very detailed picture, it's okay to draw a detail but it's not necessary, okay? So now I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go down and do the complete opposite where my sand is. So I'm gonna put my sand color in, but I'm only gonna take it to the very edge of my water and I'll soften that the same way, okay? So I'm going to rinse my brush well, um, the other thing that's important is you, you should always use clean water because if you don't use clean water, you're going to get the lines from that dirty water, okay? So I'm wetting where I'm gonna be bringing my paint up to and I'm going to mix a little bit of my burnt umber, which is my darker brown. You feel that you use a lot of that color? I know it's our, but the woman that I follow uh -huh. uses a lot of. Um, I don't use a ton of burnt on this, I guess it just depends on but it depends painting. on what you're painting, yeah. sure. Yeah. And I'm gonna water it down because I don't want it to be too dark too quick. And I'm going to take that right into the area that I wet so that I'm gonna have a nice soft blend with that. And this is gonna be my first wash of my sand. Now I am going to be putting some salt on my sand, but not the first wash. I'll be doing additional washes and then my salting won't be so intense. I want a softer uh, pickling of the, of the See, salting. I didn't realize that either, that you could layer with watercolors. Oh, absolutely. Watercolor yeah. is mainly layer, layer, layer. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to my dryer. I'm gonna dry this <laughs> real quick. And then we can move on. Marcy, I thought you said if you put water on top of a layer that's dry, mm -hmm. it's going to dilute the color. If it's, if it's if not you. dry enough. If it's oh, totally true. dry, it should be okay. But oh. if your paper is still a little bit damp, uh -huh. it'll lift it. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Marcy, there's a question in the chat. Does she come just once a month here yeah. to do this? Or with all this water color? Marcy, there's a question in the chat about what kind of blue you're using. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, now for any of these, these classes, do you need to pre register? Okay, yeah. Give them a call and I'll see you next, tomorrow. I was going to say, what's next class? Okay. We good, Mark? We have a question. Oh, no. Okay. Um, the blues that I'm using, I used cerulean blue in my sky with a little bit of ultramarine blue. And my sand color is um, my burnt umber, and it's very watered down with water. Now, if you want your sky to be darker, you can always put additional washes on, but you want to make sure that your paint is dry before you go back in to do that. Okay, so my paint's nice and dry. I'm going to put additional color on my water. Okay, so when I go in to do my water, I'm just going to do the area between my big wave and the edge of my water. And I'm going to use two tones. I'm going to use some browns here, and I'm going to use blues back here. But I'm going to have them meet, and they'll blend together. Okay, so I want my blue to be just where my water is, and it's going to be a little bit deeper, but I'm going to put in still some of my light blue, because if you look at your picture towards the left hand side, there is still a little bit of lightness in that rollover wave. So I want to keep that little bit of lightness, and this is the wash that I'm going to salt. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my wave. And of course, the top of your wave doesn't have to be perfectly straight because it's wave. But the open end of the wave, I'm going to open that up with a little bit of just plain water. I'm going to have a nice soft blend over there. I'm going to continue to put that blue in along the edge. And this is where all of that white froth is going to be, but I will be doing that with some white. As I get closer though to where that's rushing in on the sand, I'm going to switch over to my brown now because as the water rushes in, it gets less and less and you see sand versus water. So I'm going to put in a little bit more of my burnt umber now. That's where I feel that I have a big problem with is blending my colors together. Like, well, the only thing, I mean, if you just try thinking about it before you actually start. Yeah. It's, it's like anything else, you have to have a plan. Yeah. And once you have that plan, then it's so much easier to do because you have your plan, you know what you wanna do. And especially with watercolor, if you're working nice and wet, then you have a little bit of time to do that okay. because you, um, you know, you're allowing yourself that little bit of extra time. What you're working with now, it's a little bit off the screen. Part okay, of well, I'm going to show it to you this way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to yes. leave it. I love it. 
love it. We're going to leave it blend. And you see, because it's wet, you're going to get that nice soft blend. You're not going to have a hard edge. And then I'm going to let it get to a matte finish. A matte finish is a non shiny finish, not dry, just not shiny wet. So we're going to let it get to that little bit of a matte finish. And then I am going to throw some salt on it. Now, I don't want to throw the salt everywhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to salt the area where a lot of the froth is, mm -hmm. because that's where all those little air right. bubbles and everything right. are. And that's where I want right. more of my frothy look to be. So I'm going to, again, let it get to a nice um, matte finish. Doesn't take very long. And then I'm going to throw that little bit of salt on. You don't have to salt it like you're salting a roast, okay? <laughs> but you want to put on enough that it makes a difference, okay? So I'm just going to salt a little bit, and you'll be able to see those salt grains. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Really and we're just going to let that sit and work. And while that's sitting and working, I'm going to go back up because I want to deepen one side of my sky, not the whole sky. Right. I want to just deepen one side of my sky. Now, would you, I don't even know if you could answer this or mm -hmm. it would be a stupid question. Could no, there's no the stupid question. Same thing with the salt on acrylic if it was still wet. I don't know if it would react to that's acrylic because right. it's right. too yeah. thick. That's right. That's right. Okay, but I, I it, if it's know. probably if it's very very thin yeah thin. yeah okay so i'm going to just put in a little bit of deeper blue you did you did, you did try it yeah. and it worked well it, like i said you have to really water yeah. it down water the acrylic down so it, yeah it does okay. it's not as good as this yeah but, do you do a lot of acrylic painting that's what I have always done, except oh, now. I'm okay. Doing this. Yeah, see, that's me trying, too. I'm trying it. And yeah, was, try to. Yeah. You have to Although try I'm new really things. Like yeah. If you try new things, I use lots of water and they holler at me. Well, Harold hollers. Well, you want to use a lot of water with watercolor. Yes. But with yes. your acrylics, you know, <laughs> again, I'm not as. Um, I'm not as experienced with acrylic, but um, I would think that the thicker the acrylic, the better, you know, control you have on it. So, yes. Oh, yeah. I, I can't be this water. I just have to do it. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Okay. So now I'm still wet. Yes. My salt is working nicely. Yes. So what I want to do is at the top of my wave, while my paint is still wet, I'm going to go in and I am going to add my dark, my dark blue. So I'm going to be mixing in some indigo blue, which is a really nice navy blue color. And I'm going to mix that in along the top of my wave, thinner on the right, thicker as I go down on the left. And this is just that top of that rollover. Where's your little friend? He didn't come today. Oh my, no, he's at actually at a summer camp today, I think. His mom was doing some summer camp somewhere. Okay, nice and wet. I'm gonna put in a little bit more, make it nice and dark. And while you're wet, that's the time that you can add in your other colors also. So just because it's a nice little bit of a rollover, I'm gonna put in a little bit of turquoise. Can you go from one color to another color? Mm -hmm. And your brush is wet. Mm -hmm. Don't you slump some of this color into that color? <laughs> Not <laughs> especially. Because when I tried, I kept getting the red and the green, and it was like watercolor. You have to just rinse your brushes really well. 
you know, before you do you that. Do, every time yeah. you do it. And, and if you have a tendency to do something like that, there's no law that says you only have to use one brush. You can have additional brushes and then just use them. You probably have way more, way more than you would ever need. Exactly. Nice together on your own. That's okay. That's fine. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm not getting any hard edges. So I'll soften these a little bit with some more paint. Oh, oh something happened here. It'll come. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. We're still going to let that salt work, but you can see what that salt yeah. is doing now. Okay. It's giving you that nice little bubbly effect. And when we start to put our whites in over that, that will really make a great effect. So, again, I'm going to add in a little bit more darkness up at the top of that wave. And that variety of blues is what makes it real. And it does because, you know, your ocean is not just, Rare. you know, one color. Very complex. It is. Sometimes it so It does. So I'm going to add in a little bit of sap green now too, so that I have just a little bit of green in my water. Yeah, I wish this was a couple of weeks ago. I do a, uh, I follow a woman, uh, Michelle the Painter. Have you ever heard of her? I've Michelle the Painter. Online. Yeah, online. Yes. And she does contests. Uh, this, this contest was beach things. Oh, really? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I had we a, missed I, out. Yes. Right. We missed out. Okay. Yeah, I, I do a lot of her tutorials. Great. Okay, I'm going to dry this real quick too. And then when I come back, we're going to put a darker wash on this part of the sand. And then we're going to work with this part of our water. That's, that's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing how quickly it appears. It will just use a watercolor. Like I said, I've never really done watercolor. Okay, so you can see what the oh, okay. salting has oh. done now. Yes. You have a real good idea of what the salt will do for oh, your thing. So nice. Okay, we'll show these people at home so that they can see what the salting so does. Okay. I never thought it's remembered. You never, you never realize what happens, right? Yes. Okay, exactly. so we want to work up here now on this part of the water. So I'm going to put on additional wash. But before I do my additional wash, I'm going to dry brush on my water. And dry brushing is when you use the side 
of your brush. You're gonna take your brush, you're gonna use the side of it and you're gonna drag it along the paper, okay? Yeah, so often, but I never knew exactly what it was. So I'm gonna mix a darker blue. He probably just forgot. Well, he might have told me, and I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. So we're going to lay it on its side, and we're just going to drag it. And that will make it look like there's ripples of water, rough waves. <laughs> Dry brushing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that everywhere on this back water. And then when that dries, I'm going to put a real light wash over this and I'm going to salt it. So I'm going to get double my texturing. I'm going to get my dry brush texturing as well as my salting texturing. Now it's important when you do this also that you go straight. Yes. You don't want your water to look lopsided. So you want to make sure that when you are doing this, you are going straight across your paper. Okay. So now we're going to give this a chance to dry. And then we're going to go back up and put a wash over that and salt it a little bit. We're going to move down here now to the sand down here because I need for this sand to be really nice and dark. The reason being is when I have that nice white froth coming up on my sand, if my sand is really light, you won't even see that. So we want to mix a nice dark um, umber and we're going to put that wash on and we're going to take that wash up right into the blues. Okay. Sand when it's wet is dark. Yeah. It is. So we're going to mix a little bit of umber. I'm going to mix a little bit of indigo blue with that, deepen it up a little bit. You could also put in a little bit of black. I was just going to say, I haven't seen you put any blacks in. Oh, you will. I like black too. But I'm using some indigo blue. Yeah, blacks with the paint wipes. It's really not as long as, again, you can control where you yeah, put you it. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. You have to know where you want to do it. Okay, so I'm going to wet my water where I'm going to bring my brown up to. Okay, so I'm going to wet it up into here. Just water. So that when I bring my brown, my umber up there, it's going to have a nice soft blend. So you're getting this nice dark sand color, but it's going to have a nice soft blend right up where it's meeting my deeper water. Now by deeper water, I don't mean two feet. I mean, it's probably three or, you know, three inches, but it's deeper than that little bit that washes up on the sand. Okay. So now I have this nice soft blend with this nice dark sand and that has come up so that when I put my whites on now, you're gonna be able to see them without much of a problem at all, okay? So I'm gonna just test my water, make sure this is dry back in here, which it is. I'm gonna put a wash just on this part of the water and I'm gonna salt that, okay? now. You can pick and choose your water. You know, if you want it to be the Caribbean, you can use turquoise blue. If you want it to be ocean, you can do indigo. So it's up to you what kind of um, blues that you want. I'm going to just go ahead and use the indigo. Salt on, as long as the, your, your paper's dry, you can put it on anywhere. You anytime. can, you, well, the more layers of paint that are on, the less reaction you're gonna have with your salt. So if you put your salt on your first layer, that's when you're gonna get reaction like this. 
if you put it on after you've done one or two, your reaction will be slight. But because my water is way out there, I don't want anything real big and, and gotcha. vibrant. I want it to be much more subtle. Yeah. So it's not going to really matter. So I'm going to go back. Just... Yep. So I'm going to go back in there now. And I'm going to put this on. I should probably just use my big brush. You can always add color. So while you're nice and wet, if you want to drag a little bit of light blue through your cerulean blue, if you want to drag a little bit of turquoise through, you can do that. You won't get any hard lines because you're nice and wet. If you weren't wet, you would get hard lines. And, you know, again, that's not so, something that's terrible that would happen back in your, um, you know, in your water, in your ocean. But if you don't want that to happen, then you want to just be careful. So I'm going to drag a little bit more indigo through while I'm nice and wet. And I'm just going to allow those lines to dissipate. But what I'm creating is almost the look of some rolling waves. Okay. Okay. So now we want to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go back to this nice big one here because I still want this to be nice and dark in here because that rollover of the wave is causing a big shadow in there also. Yes. So I'm going to go back in with my indigo. The nice thing again with watercolor is you can layer. So if you're too light, you can go back, go back in and put another dry. layer on. The key is waiting till things dry. You don't want to be doing it unless it's dry because all you'll do then is create mud and you don't want to do that. And I'm going to just soften my edge. And again, I want to put in a little bit of turquoise in there. Now, so now I have my nice, big, dark rollover. I have my nice, softer water back in here. And now I can start to work in some of my whites, okay? Before you ever use any whites, the white is the last color that you can use because white is not accepting to anything over it. Oh, okay. So if you tried to put blue over white, you're going to get light blue. If you try to put white or, or black over white, you're going to get gray. So you have to wait until you are totally thrilled with everything else that you have before you can go ahead and put in your, um, your whites. So it has to get dry. It has to be nice and dry, and you have to be I'm happy with everything that you've done so far. If you feel like you need some other colors, you know, then you need to get them down before you put your white. If you want to deepen your sky, you can do that anytime. Your white's not going up there. So it doesn't really matter. Yep, unless you do. But you want to make sure that wherever it is that you're going to have a little bit of white, that you're happy with it. Now, what I would prefer to do, and I'm going to dry this real quick, I want to make this even a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm going to go and dry this really quick, and I'm going to deepen this, and then you'll see how we're going to create this rolling water. I also have a place up at the green lights. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Storage to the time. It's a shame what happens in that neighborhood. Yeah. And we moved there, it was a nice neighborhood. Yeah. So far, my place isn't too bad. I'm too blocked up from selling a lot. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's better or what, but I'm going to say, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's been a lot going on, but yeah, so far it hasn't touched me, right? And maybe that's why. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, no, I totally understand. Now, do you have any of the art things out in Greensburg? Do you do any of them? I, I, have, I always told Nancy I was going to go, but I never made it. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. Let's deepen our sand and then maybe deepen, even deepen our um, water a little bit more. And remember what I said about using clean water. Um, you know, if you're doing sand, it's not so important because sand is dirty anyway. But if you would be going back up into your sky, you definitely want to be using clean water for stuff like that. Okay. Good girl. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to ruin what you worked so hard on. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my brown here. Going to do one more little wash on that. The nice thing I said about watercolor is you can layer. So you can layer lots of um, layers of your color. If you're too light, you can layer as long as you make sure that you're nice and dry. Let's get a little bit of blue up in there now. Perfect. And then it's always a good idea to move your picture around a little bit. That helps to let the water, um, the color flow in your water. So you have some nice soft edges. Wipe off your table or your work area so that the water that's on your table doesn't wash back into your picture. You don't want anything like that to happen. Okay, all right. Now, while that is drying, you can decide what you're going to do with your wave and your water. Is your sky the color that you want it to be? If not, 
Do you want to put another wash on it? Because while this is drying, you can work on something that's already dry up here. Do you want to put another wash on your water? Do you want to dry brush a little bit more on your water? Do you want to salt your water more? Okay, so maybe we want to do that. If you put a nice light wash of indigo on your water, Indigo is one of my favorite colors because it's so nice and dark. But I have water to it, so it's not intensely dark. Put a little bit of salt up there. I'll blend the rest of it out with some water just to soften it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's water. Okay, so if you have a little wrinkle or a little crinkle or a little line, mm -hmm. it's water, it's okay. If it was someone's cheek, that's different. You don't want that, but something like that, it's okay. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of salt on there and see what kind of reaction I'm gonna get in my water in the distance, okay? Again, you wanna make sure no matter where it is that you're gonna be putting any whites that you're totally happy with your colors because you can't go back over that. So again, just one more time, I just wanna deepen the top to that wave. I just can't seem to get that as dark as I want it to be. So up in here, I just wanna get some of that nice dark blue in there. You never mix white with any of your colors. No. I only use it as a highlight or for something like the, you know, the froth in water or something, but I do not mix it to lighten a color. To lighten my watercolors, I just add water okay. to lighten the intensity. I don't lighten the thickness of the paint. I also know you mix all your colors. You don't mm -hmm. think right out from it. No, I put them all on my palette and get enough water with them. If you'd go directly from your bin color, it's going to be too thick. And if it's too thick when you're putting it on, if it's if it resembles acrylic, then when you do put water down, then it's going to dissipate and go everywhere. So that's how we learned in grade school. Right. So you need for it to do that before you get here. Okay. So the other thing about white is it will contaminate your picture, I mean, your paints. Yeah. So if you get white mixed in with your red, it's gonna make it pink. Okay. If you right. get it mixed with your black, it's gonna make it gray. So I always keep my white separate. Oh. I don't even put it near my palette because I don't want my palette to, you know, to get separate. So I always, show everybody at home, I always keep it in its own little container. And then that way, my white doesn't get contaminated either, you know, because it, if you want white, you want white. You don't want uh, a white with a little bit of another color in it. So I always keep it separate. So if you took out in a cloud, mm -hmm. and usually the, the, like the bottom is a blue cast from this, the water, mm -hmm. how would you get that blue? Okay, so if you want a cloud, I never put my clouds in with white. I blot my paper and take the paint okay. off and bring it back to my white paper. So my cloud is actually my paper. Okay. Okay. So then if I do want to deepen the bottom of my cloud, I just wet it and put in my color and okay. let it, yeah. I don't, the only time I would ever use white to make my cloud is if I had a big boo-boo and I needed to try to fix it. But that doesn't happen too many times, fortunately. But no, I don't ever paint something like that as a white cloud, okay? So now the you can see now after many layers of color, I'll show everybody at home first, you can still see how the water still does get a nice little bit 
of texture from your salt even though you've okay. had yeah. a couple washes before yes. it still will it still will it's show you something it still will give you a little bit of something okay so now i'm going to dry this one last time and we will start our white she actually has yeah Okay, so I removed all my salt. I'm nice and dry. And the most important thing, I'm using clean water. Nice and clean. Okay, I'm going to use a couple different size brushes. I'm going to use a bigger brush for some of my bigger areas. I'm going to use a number six round for some of the smaller ones. And I'm going to use a nice fine rigger, which is a nice fine. Let's see here. But I can never use, I can never figure out how to use it. We can't see you it. No, I'm, uh -uh. There we go. There we go. And this is a nice uh, fine rigger. Okay. Okay. It's long and thin. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, there's no rule that you have to do the thinnest first or you have to do the, the biggest first. Um, and I will be doing a lot of dry brushing with my white, okay? So I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna go along my edge first. And that's only to help me define the edge of my water, where I want the edge to be. So I'm gonna use my medium brush for that. Get my white going here. The, the thing with white also, is your white has a tendency to dry very pale. If it does, let it dry and just repaint. Don't keep going over your wet paint over and over and over because all it's doing is soaking down into the paper and you're really not going to get it any darker. Okay, so I'm going to do the edge of my water here. see that person. There we go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And as I go, I can use my brush and dry brush in with that the direction that the water would be coming in. And you see how great that looks. That look, yeah. you can just see how that's coming in off the water. Yeah. And Marcy, they're all kind of blues and reds and greens or yellows, um, whites. Is it just one kind of white? There are there are really not a lot of whites. There's Chinese white. There's um, and that's the one that I like. I prefer Chinese white, but there are. Um, there are thicker kinds of whites. Um, the Chinese white for me works the best because it's the most opaque to me. So I like, it's just called Chinese white and it has that nice opaque -y finish to it. And you wanna make sure that when you're putting your white on, you are going the direction that your wave is coming. 
You don't want to go straight up and down and you don't want to tilt downwards because your wave is coming more up, you know, up your beach. So you want to make sure that you are getting it where it needs to be. The parts that are more solid after you get your wash in, then you can just dry brush a little bit thicker. I like to dry brush mainly the froth because I want to make sure that I'm leaving holes in my water because when the water comes, the froth comes in, it's not a solid white. So I want to make sure that either by dry brushing or being very careful as to how I bring it in, I'm leaving sand or water show, right? And I will go back in with my smaller brush. I'll show you that in a minute to get my much finer lines. Yes. So now with my finer brush, I'm going to go in and do my finer little ripply lines. And these are really important also, because you have to have some of that real fine, fine foam, as well as your bigger sections of foam. bigger sections. Again, I said I like to just dry brush it. So I'm just going to dry brush bigger areas because again, I don't want it to be a solid white. I want those little holes to be there. You have to be careful too. How far back do you want to take your froth? You don't want to take your froth all the way to your horizon line. So you have to be careful, you know, where it is that you're going to stop and start your, um, you know, your froth. Now, if, you, if you're using your reference picture, then you want to go back to this nice big wave with that. But again, as it goes back to that wave, it gets thinner. You're not going to have big gobs of froth in your nice big wave. It's too active for it to be that big. We're just going to work our way across. Doesn't it look like you could just like walk through this? Yeah. And again, I'm going the way my wave is going. You have to make sure that you keep that angle. Perspective is very important, not just in watercolor, but in anything. You have to have that right perspective. If you lose your perspective, unless you want it to be that way and you want it to be like an abstract, um, you know, you have to have your perspective in the right places. Okay, so we're gonna to continue to go all the way across. I will do some real fine lines at the base of my big wave here. And you can even do a little bit if you want at the top of your wave and actually arch your brush towards you so that you're getting that little bit of a rollover.
Okay, so I'm going to continue to do that, but I want to show you one more thing. The water has come up to the sand. It's going to go back to the ocean. It just didn't come up one time. It's been coming up and going back, coming up and going back. So we want to show you, I want to show you just with a little bit of my watered down white, and we're going to do a little bit of splashing. I want to do just a little bit of where the water has been. Okay, so it has been up to here. It has been up to here. It has been. I'm dry brushing in the same direction, but much paler, not quite as intense. Do I want to show little bubbles on the beach? from where the water was and then the little crabs throw their, their <laughs> air bubbles up on the beach. So if you wanna get real realistic, okay, this is called a whisk brush or you could use a fan brush. Let's see here if we can show everybody at home. This is a wisp, but you could also use it a fan. And I didn't know what they were for. Looks like my palms. Well, they're actually to paint very, um even lines like okay. if you're doing something um i did it recently on a tablecloth but it's also good for splashing so i'm going to get a little bit on my edge and i'm just going to splash uh, i wondered how you did that okay, okay. so just with your finger yep. and you're so going to get that little bit of splashing okay and that's going to make it really look like that water huh. okay you can it, you have to probably do it a lot more and it would be a lot finer but you can do it the thing with anything is less is better you can always add you can always add more blues before you're white you can always add more brown you can always add more white but if you put it on too much too soon, too heavy handed, it's very difficult to take it off. You really have to have the experience to, to know what to do. So less is better. I cannot stress that enough. You can add, you can add, you can add. It's hard to take off, yes. Okay, so let's get, let's do the rest of this over here. I don't want to hurry anybody, but we're, we're we don't we, we can't be here all night. They'll be mad. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, and the thing too is, you know, what I like the most about watercolor is it's quick. Yeah. You know, that's my that's my thing. I do not like anything that I have to be doing it for hours on end. So if I can do things nice and quick. I'm much happier with it. <laughs> my nice little soft lines, my thinner lines, my little ripples of water. And again, with watercolor and probably with most other mediums too, you can go back to this painting in three weeks yeah. and continue to work on yes. it. You can go back to it in a month and continue to work on it. You can go back to it in a year and work on it. It's still gonna be workable. You can still color and layer your paints. So, you know, that's what I like about it. You can do it, you can come back to it, you can stay with it till you finish it. It shouldn't take you forever to finish it. Um, there's just a lot that you can do in a little bit of time. A little bit more dry brush. What kind of brush are you using there? This is a number six round. Oh, okay. Just going over it. Okay. 
And I'm going to do a couple more of these coming in, going out. Make this roll over a little bit darker. Especially right here at the top. Maybe one little bit right here. There we go. I love it. Nice and soothing, isn't it? Makes you kind of want to be there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so again, we'll go over this, go over our colors, go over what we did. The sky, nice cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is a nice robin egg blue. Mixes well with other colors, tends to be a little bit opaque, which is good if you want like a nice soothing intense sky. Ultramarine blue, you can mix that in. Water, I like my water nice and deep, indigo. Indigo is probably one of my favorite colors. That's a nice deep navy blue. A Little bit of sap green to it if you're into the ocean little bit of turquoise if you're into the Caribbean. And then of course your sandy color, burnt umbers, a little bit of yellow ochre maybe if you want it to have a little bit of a tinge to some little bit of yellow to it. Lightning, lighting and darkening. I darken with indigo. I am not objected in any way to black. I love black, but especially with all the blues in the ocean, it's nice to go with a nice indigo with your browns. To lighten it, water. Don't add white, water. Water will just lighten the intensity, which in turn lightens your color. Um, white has to be your last thing that you put on there. You cannot color over white. The other thing, dry brushing, you wanna lay your brush on its side. If you're laying your brush on its side and you get a solid line, too much paint too much liquid, dab it off on a paper towel. If you put your brush down and you drag it across your paper and you get nothing, not enough liquid. <laughs> you need to get that paint wet so that it can, be, it can move. And remember, you have to give your water a source. It's not gonna move on the paper just by itself. So if you put the water down for it to move, then it can move. Okay, for those at home that want to see the reference picture, this is the reference picture. So let me see if I can try to show you both at the same time a little bit. Uh, maybe that'll help you see, better. see <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, that's more okay. yeah, so again, here's your reference picture and your reference picture is also online. So you can get your reference picture to work from. And then of course, this is the actual painting that you can see to work from, you know, um, also. Nice. You can have more than one wave. If you want to put another little wave in the background, all you would have to do just with your brush. And again, depending on how thick or how thin you want it. And you would just make a little line going across there. Soften maybe the underside of it a little bit. And then with your thinner rigger, you could just do a little bit of, of a darker line going across the top. And then it will, it'll blend into your wetness that you just put down, okay? So if you wanted to kind of have like another ripple starting to build, it's gonna to start to build into a wave, okay? Or if you don't want it, the nice thing too is if you put something in, 
and you say, eh, I'm not sure I want that there. You can just go like that and it comes out most of the time. Now, if you really, really, really wanted that to come out, it wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But if you don't care, it will. <laughs> Again, when your whites start to dry, you'll see a lot of them dry lighter because white just has a tendency to draw uh, to, to um, dry less opaque. So just redo it. Just let it dry and then you can go back in and redo it. You're not gonna get your exact lines, but you'll get close enough. Okay, any yeah. other questions? How long have you been doing? I have been doing this for 33 years. Wow, wow. Long time. Were you ever a teacher? I you teach do... art and I do teach watercolor. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I've been teaching watercolor for about 30 years. Now, do you have a studio or something? In my home. Teach? Oh, okay. But I, I, I didn't know you had it in your house. Uh, I have it in my house. Oh. Up, yep, yep oh. up on Cedar. You're so close. I am. <laughs> oh, you're right in town for today. Uh -huh. Yep. Oh, yep. okay. And then I do have paintings at the Latrobe Art uh -huh. Center. Okay. Um, and in November, I will be here okay. in the gallery. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Hmm. It's great. Again, the Monroeville Library, tons of things to do. They have talks on travel. They have painting classes, photography, lots of different things. The Monroeville Arts Council. If you really want to help, become a member because um, they could use both your financial support and your body support. Um, and they, again, have a lot of different programs that they offer. So um, we strongly urge you to become yeah. artsy. So artsy now, in the East. That yeah, should be our motto. That? <laughs> yeah. this, this one? No, that's Oh, horrible. This one's still horrible. Yeah, well, that, they're yeah. the one we're working with, the library. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. So, uh, okay. it's a wonderful opportunity. Yes. And Marcy, we thank you. You're welcome. So much. Any questions, my email is on the site. Oh, okay. Um, you can email me. Um, I usually try to get to you within a day. Oh, I will be. So, you can then. email. <laughs> um, or uh, we are going to try to do some in-person classes down the line. This whole COVID thing just has everybody, yes, right. you know, in turmoil. But we will like right. to hopefully get back to that someday. And um, all of the past classes are still on the Monroe okay. Hill Library site. Okay. And then I also, um, every week, I do a tutorial on YouTube. Oh, so if you're interested yes. in that, you can just email me and I'll add you to our oh, email please. list. Yes, okay. yes, I would like that. Okay. And I do have another question. For sure. You. Can you use watercolors on canvas? There are watercolor canvases. Okay. Yes, you have to buy a specific watercolor canvas. Oh, okay. But okay. there are watercolor okay. stretch canvases. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Because I was going to do a picture and I had the background all painted and ready. But I didn't know if I could use these watercolors. Yeah, on not probably on a regular not. canvas okay. because it probably has some kind of a varnishy finish, which would not let the watercolor Color adhere stay. to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Watercolor sure. soaks into watercolor right. paper because it's rag. Right. Okay. Wasn't, I was like, okay. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Here's my first watercolor picture that I did. Oh, that's great. Love the color in the hats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was nice and attempt. blending. That's okay. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. I'm like, you I know, know what I'm doing. I almost hate the shit. Oh, no, don't hate it. Yeah. Never hate oh, it's your lovely. art. It's lovely. You should be. You should well, hate that. I drew the outside and then yeah. I added it because it didn't look right. And I saw it got put more petals in. Yeah. So, no, but, no, it's fine. But I didn't use enough water. I don't Oh, I think you did. Um, especially where you've got your darker colors, that's where you don't want to use a lot of color yeah. because then you would lose the intensity yeah. with it. But no, you just did fine. You did good. Oh, it does look good. Practice. Yeah, I that paint looks real good. Every single day. It's not even so if it's for 15 minutes. 
I paint every single day. Al, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. that's, if you're gonna paint, paint every day. Paint every and day. I did for a while, but then I got lazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you. there are days. I mean, I say yeah. I paint every day, but there are days when I can't, but I try to make it a habit. Even if it's just, if I went in and put the white on my wave, you know, and because you'll never just go and do one little thing. You'll, you will stay for a little bit longer. Um, and the other thing is always finish your picture. Even if you hate it, finish it because you're going to learn something from it. And most likely if you finish it, you won't hate it anymore because you'll get beyond what you didn't like either by adding something or finishing it and your eye won't go to what you don't like now. That's so nice. you need to finish your pictures. Then if it's totally finished and you still don't like it, fine. You know what, but, paper. Yep, but you really want to, you really want to finish it. Um, again, I will go over this real quickly too with your paper. You, you talked about your paper. You can get away with using less expensive paints. You can get away with using less expensive brushes. You cannot get away with using cheap paper. You will not be happy with your picture no matter what you do. It's watercolor, though. Watercolor paper, but... It doesn't... It, it's watercolor paper, but if it's not pressed right, or if, know, it's, if it doesn't have the right absorbency, then your paint is just gonna lay on the top in a big puddle. It'll never soak down in. And so you can never layer your washes because it won't go paper. anywhere. So um, you can get it. Um, I don't go to Michael's, um, not for any reason other than I buy all of my art supplies at Artists and Craftsmen in Squirrel Hill. Oh, okay, okay. They're right. on Hobart Street. And if you tell them that, you know, that I sent you, they'll give you a 10% discount. Oh, nice. And they're not expensive. Okay. Um, if you don't want to leave your house and you want it delivered to you, then you can go online to Cheap Joe's. But I would definitely recommend the hundred, at least the 140 pound cold press. 140 pound. Marcy, it says here the co-host would like you to unmute. Is there more funny? Um, I'm not muted on here. Oh, so Maybe he's talking to somebody else. He might be talking to someone else. On the, uh, yeah. On Zoom. So when you, like the a petal, mm -hmm. do you wet it first, the petal, and then put the color on? Um, Is that the way to do it? You don't have to. You can, you, you, you can paint your, you know, paint you it color. first. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can paint it I first. I didn't know whether I should wet it first. I couldn't remember. I think it's kind of up to you, like what you, you know, what your personal preference is. It's the same as when you soften like your wave. If you wanna put your, your plain water down first and then bring your paint up to that to soften it, fine. Yeah. If you wanna put your paint on first and then soften the edge after, fine. Whatever you're comfortable yeah, doing. Because if you're not comfortable that. with what you're doing, you're going to have a hard time doing it well because you'll never get into that comfort zone. I do more animals. Mm -hmm. and to me, they're, it's, it's going to be hard. So you, have to, you have to try other things because like you said, you mainly do animals. Well, you might love doing water if I you like did that. it. You know, I, you know, when I first started, I was terrified of doing people. I don't do portraits. <laughs> well, I don't do portraits, but I do do people. And, you know, it, once you do, do them, you, you realize that, you know, it's not as, maybe as hard as you thought. I think that the whole trick is following reality or nature. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. with a flower, like a poinsettia, I always set up a, um, a model. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, even a high painting, painting mm -hmm. you know, whatever you're painting. But with that, like a poinsettia, I would put light on a uh, uh, silver mm -hmm. poinsettia, or if you had a real one. Sure. And then that's it's where the dark. <laughs> that's where the dark yeah. goes, and, mm -hmm. and that's when it would. And that's see, when I you see that too. Mm -hmm. The light, the darkness. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. I have a hard time with that. 
Well, I work from photos. So, you know, my light source is always going to be, be right, there. right there because it's in my photo. It's not going right. to move. It's not going right. to, you know, but there, there's very few pictures that have no light source whatsoever. Right. right. You know, unless you have a day like this morning <laughs> where, where you really don't have a light source. But the thing that makes your picture come alive is your shadowing right. and your highlighting. And that's where I have a hard time. <clears> because time. if you don't ever have a shadow it's or if you good. never have a highlight, it's going to be flat. Yes. And that's where I have a problem. Mm -hmm. I do have a problem with right. that. That's what I need to be talking about. Yeah. How do you do You that? have to have that for anything. Just like the darkness in this wave, if there was no darkness, no shadow in this wave, you wouldn't you, see the rollover. Right it now. would just look right. like a flat part of dark water That's right up against the back water. That's the only way that you can show a difference. Distance, background, foreground yeah. um, is with your highlighting yeah. and your, That's and your I shadow. I can't do it. I did those pictures and mm -hmm. there's water and it just, I just put some lines in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That I do. I don't know how to do that. Right. Well, reference well, you, is, is really important. I'm, mm -hmm. I draw the model at this little oh, drawing model on Thursday, the Greensboro Art Center. And, but so we draw from life mm -hmm. then we take a photo because you want to come back and then you say, oh, yeah, here, there was the light right. on the face here, this solid. Right. You know, we, reference whether you're in the ocean or right. the flowers or anything yeah you have to you have, have to, you know unless to, unless you yeah. have someone or something that's going to be there for you know as long as it takes for you right. to do it right then you know right. you have to have that right. reference so, so that's this thursday's class of let's join people oh, like a <laughs> 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 yeah, no, i I do more. I do better painting on rocks. Yeah, <laughs> paint on rocks. That's okay. And shoes. It's still art. Yeah. As yeah. long as you enjoy it. Yeah. So. Oh, I try to paint every evening before I go to bed. Yep. Even if it's wow. like you said, just a little bit. Yep. To, yep. Yeah. Yep. A little bit. Yeah. It relaxes. A little bit. It it chills you. Yes. It takes you down those couple yes. notches. Yes. yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, well, I'll leave this out for you guys to look at if you'd like to for any reason. And if there's any other questions, please feel free.